In this video, we're going to examine the practicality of balancing flywheels or impellers or any other type of rotating body without sophisticated equipment. What I've set up here is a little balance system that I'm going to try. Basically, what we've done is set up an unstable top, and we're going to set this flywheel on top of there. You can see I already have a mark on it. This side always leans down. No matter what I do, I try to set it on there just perfectly. And you can see we have fallen down on that side. So what I'm going to attempt to do is take this small drill bit and drill a hole at the center of some of the readings I get. I'm going to do this several times. I'm going to topple it several times and try to get the exact perpendicular angle so I know right where to drill that hole. Before I drill any holes or do anything to this impeller, I'm going to hook it up to this motor and we're gonna shoot some power into it and we're gonna do a vibration analysis on it. We're gonna kick it up a notch and we're going to compare the before and after on a vibration analysis as well. I have two different apps on this phone. We're going to put those to the test as well. So this might be kind of interesting to see how this turns out, even as far as using a vibration analyzer on a smartphone to determine whether or not you've achieved a higher level of balance on a rotor. Okay, so here we are. We are at one amp of power on this device. You can see it looks a little odd, like it's just got some geometric issues to it. Even though it was printed out, cut as perfect as I can get it. It still looks absolutely horrid. Uh, let's see, we're having some lighting issues and acquiring data. You can see that our Y is almost maxed out. Got about one bar. We're going to get some different readings on this. A graph will be displayed after that timer is done. I don't think there's any reason to run it for the whole minute, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway so we can get a good look at the uh, sheet. This is without the balance. We're doing a control test here. We're done. Let's view data. Okay, so right there, there you have it. So that's what we'll do. We'll compare that, that data set right there. And I am using Vibe Sensor, the, the one right there for this analysis. So now we're gonna pull this rotor off and see what we got. Okay, so here's where we are. As you can see, I'm still leaning badly to this side where I'm doing all the work. I'm taking a bunch of marks and kind of working those areas. So, no matter what I do, we're still heavy on that side, but I don't want to overdo it. I'm curious to see how much effect that had. So rather than go all the way and try to get this perfect, we're going to do a second test. I'm going to hook this back up and we're going to do a vibration analysis and we're going to see if we're at least headed in the right direction. I'll get all that stuff wrote down at the end and we're going to see how this goes. Hopefully we'll get less vibration. I'm worried that maybe there's something wrong with my gimbal point. The point that's on the inside of that gimbal is not exactly perfect. It's not a needle, I made it. So it could be doing something weird in there and I wanna make sure. But um, this should have given us some type of balancing. Fellas, I am tremendously pleased. We're not even done yet and I can already tell you it's working. I can tell by the way it feels that we've lost a significant amount of vibration. Um, I don't know if you remember what it looked like last time. But even some of that wobble I was seeing appears to have disappeared for some reason. 
we're going to go ahead and start the analysis. You remember that our Y was topped out. Wow, look at that. Our Y reading was topped out on the last test. We have actually lost some bars and we're still not finished. This is a, a noticeable difference from last time. It's smoothed out a lot. Okay, now I don't remember the hertz. I believe we were at 37 hertz last time. So I'm not sure what that means, why the frequency changed by one hertz. Maybe that's means it's a higher frequency vibration because it's not as violent, it's not as bumpy. Okay, fellas, I'm freaking tickled to death here. I'm absolutely amazed that finally something is working well as far as balancing a flywheel. This is the numbers. And the vibration analysis is turning out to be a godsend. It's, it's amazing that uh, we are able to actually see progress in numbers. This is run one, okay? We were at 37 hertz on run one. 37 hertz being slower than the 38 hertz basically means it was a jarrier, slower vibration rather than really fast and high frequency. Our X coordinate was experiencing a 0.81 meters a second acceleration. Our Y was the worst at 10 meters a second acceleration. And our Z is 2.3. Okay, this is a uh, run two. You can see we've cleaned up drastically. We're to 2.3 where we were at 0.81. We're at 6.5 where we were at a whopping 10. And we are at 0.69. And we were at 0.23. So we see here the improvements that we made and we're not even done yet. An astounding 3.5 meters per second, a second, was shaved off the acceleration. And we are not even finished. And that's a lot of metal I removed. Look at all those holes. So I'm gonna continue the process. As you can see during the process, I'm making new lines. Those lines or represent the perpendicular slant. So if you see a line there, it leaned perpendicular at that point. As you can see, it's starting to move over here now. We were right up here in the middle somewhere and it has moved down. That line there also triggered. So somewhere in between here and here, we have got some imbalance left. The whole side of this thing is off. So I'm going to take this back off. I'm going to set it back on our little gimbal here. And uh, this is what I meant by having a bad needle point. I don't know if you'll be able to focus that. Almost. It's not the best needle point in the world. I do have a nice cone in the back of this, which is important for this to work. Finding a piece like this may be your biggest challenge in pulling this off. You can make one though, but that's the key. So I'm gonna pull that off of there and balance her up, throw it back on there. We're gonna put the vibration analysis back on it and we're gonna see what it does. I think I'm gonna go ahead and call it a day on that. I've never got it to set that smooth before. You can see we still got, I could maybe drill one hole over here, but I don't think I'm gonna do it. So there it is, we're gonna throw it back on the engine. We're gonna get the uh, vibration analyzer out and we're gonna see what we did here. Okay, we may have a bit of a problem with our readings on this run because this time when I turned it on, I noticed that the amperage had dropped almost 10 milliamps, and it's probably in part because it no longer vibrates. The vibration is so low now that I think it's actually pulling more amps at a given triac setting. So what I've done is I've went ahead and turned the triac up to a higher setting, back up to one amp. As you can see, there is a drastic increase in balance. Tremendous, almost 50% increase from what I'm seeing. Upon touching this, I'm getting absolutely hardly no vibration whatsoever compared to what I was before. This thing does kick off a considerable amount of air, by the way, for its shape. So anyway, I'm expecting to see a huge improvement, and 
I could spend a little more time on this, but I'm not going to. I'm going to call that good. Double check that we are in fact still running at 1 amp. So yes, that time the improvement was so drastic that the amperage was altered. We're at about 0.98, which is unacceptable. Let me fix that real quick. Okay, so this is the final data set of the vibration analysis tool on the iPhone. We have here run one and its constituents, including the peaks. This was run one with no balancing whatsoever. And I guess one of the most drastic vibration points is that we're gonna look at is the Y coordinate, just for speed of illustration here. You can see we started off with 10 and we ended with 1.7 which resulted in an improvement of 8.3 meters per second a second of acceleration and vibration. In addition to that, we achieved a 3 hertz increase in vibration, which is better, it's a less violent vibration. than a, The lower the hertz, the more jarry it is. So we gained 3 hertz. We also reduced power consumption by 0.10 amps at 120 volts so 0.10 times 120 we saved 12 watts by balancing this thing basically so let me just write that so there we go. I should know this at any rate I don't have any way of de determining RPM so this is good enough in my opinion to prove that the process does work I mean these improvement numbers speak for themselves. And if you want to look at it this way, we nearly doubled the improvement on our X coordinate. We're over doubled on the Y coordinate and that's about a 100% increase right there. Almost. Okay, fellas, one thing to remember here about this data set, it's a little bit misleading in the sense that on the third run, after we had balanced it, after the second run, it was so precise and so well balanced that the amount of wattage required to run it at the particular triac setting we used on the initial test dropped the amperage by about 0.10 amps. So what I did was turn the amperage back up to one amp, thinking that that was going to keep me as consistent as possible with an accurate data set but in reality I flawed the data set but it was to our advantage what I'm saying is is that because it was now running at 9.9 .9 amps because it's now so balanced I changed the RPM drastically by increasing the amperage so when I could hear the whine of the motor go up just a little bit so what that's saying is that part of the 40 Hertz we seen is from the increase in RPMs. But these numbers are botched as a result of that. We probably got a higher precision of balance than we actually are seeing in these numbers because as I said, due to the change in power when I checked it, I increased the RPMs drastically, which skewed the data set. However, because it's skewed to our advantage, meaning that correction would only show a greater increase in accuracy, there's no need to worry about it. So I'm not even going to take this any further. Just something that I wanted to point out for the sake of being precise. So a drastic improvement was achieved with this process of balancing with just simple equipment. And the vibration analyzer is something that a lot of you people won't have access to, but you don't need it. This pretty much just validates the process. So you don't have to have this. It's just a, a, a good way of visually inspecting your progress. So this thing can definitely handle some higher RPM now. Still hardly no vibration.
So there you have it, fellas. We have definitely balanced that wheel.